In this full review of the Mixtrack Platinum FX, we're gonna talk through all the functions of this controller with particular emphasis on the effects, it's in the name after all, the wonderful jog wheels with these displays on them, and the improvements to the pads, which are all things that have changed over the previous Mixtrack Platinum. We're also gonna talk through the rest of the features, the inputs and outputs, look at the competition. By the end of this review, you'll know for sure if this controller is right for you. As always, please do like, follow and share if you enjoy this content. Right, shall we get started? So this controller is designed for Serato DJ and it comes with a program called Serato DJ Lite in the box. It's a cut down version of the full Serato program. However, apart from lacking some loop controls, which I'd like to see, we'll talk about in a bit, and the ability to record, which is quite a big one, it does have all you need, including the four decks that this controls. So it's a good place to start, but just bear in mind that the 249 price on this does not include the full version of Serato. At some point you will want to upgrade to the full version of Serato. Build quality is lovely, uh, nothing wrong with it at all. We've got an original mixed track platinum from five years ago, still going strong in our school. Uh, and this is an improvement on the build quality of that. So while this is a consumer controller, it's not designed for professionals to use in clubs night after night, it's gonna last. No, no complaints there at all. I wanna give you a quick look at the inputs and outputs, the mixer, the decks, the loops, so that we can then move on to spend the majority of our time here talking about the effects, the pads, uh, and the displays. So let's do that. So the inputs and outputs, you've got a USB input for your computer. This is where the power comes from as well. There's a microphone input at the back. Output to your speakers, you do need to have wired speakers and amplifier here, it doesn't use your computer's audio. And on the front are two headphone inputs for eighth and quarter inch headphone jacks, which means that you don't have to worry about the adapter that we always used to, use, used to lose back in the day from our headphones just they'll plug in there, that's pretty standard stuff nowadays. Let's look at the mixer section. So the mixer is this part down the middle and it has the pretty standard layout. So you've got your level control at the top, which is for making sure your input levels are not too loud. Then you've got your three band EQ, bass, mid and treble. You've got your filter, which is a really nice resonant filter there for mixing with main channel volume control, and the crossfader to flip to the other channels. These feel okay, nothing special, but then you wouldn't expect that at this price, but they do the job just fine. And the other channel is identical, as is the way with mixers. The decks are special. These are six inch jog wheels and they feel awesome. They're beautifully weighted. Just at this price point, this is unheard of, as indeed, are these really nice long faders. Now these were on the previous Mixtrack uh, uh, Platinum and on the Mixtrack Pro, but they're still here and they're awesome. Now what has happened is the decks are identically laid out now. Whereas previously it was like there was a mirror down the middle and there were mirror images of each other. So this fader would be out here, but now it's been laid out this way. This is the way that layouts on controllers have gone recently. So no surprise there. And I think that's the right choice, but these are really nice. I think it's a big plus point. Uh, and while we're here, let's actually cover off these internal displays because they're a differentiator from uh, all other controllers at this price point and the Mixtrack Pro FX, which is the $50 cheaper sister controller to this one. So these are pretty cool. So you've got this display showing you when the deck is moving and which direction it's moving in. You have the BPM in the middle, which is the speed of the track. You have this number here that's telling you how far is elapsed on the track and you have the white ring here, which is telling you how far through the track you are. So if I move back, you'll see the white ring is, it's like a progress bar, is now going back to earlier on in the track. There's a few other little bits and pieces in there as well, but basically they're really useful because it just means you don't have to glance at your computer for some of this stuff, and you probably end up quite liking those, but then by no means essential. So we are gonna talk a little bit about the differences between this and the smaller mixed track Pro FX, that's one of them. So nice displays, thumbs up for those. Let's move on and have a look at something else that's new, which is the looping functions on this device because the old one didn't have these loop buttons here. So loops are of course a big part of DJing uh, and now you can turn your loops on really easily just by hitting that button and whatever loop length is set in the software, you can see we've got a one beat loop that I just triggered there, is gonna work. So I hit the times two button, it's now a two beat loop in the software, hit the half button, here, 
and now it goes back to a one beat loop in the software. Uh, and that is actually as low as it goes, one beat, which is a shame. You know, you want to go lower than that. You want to have fractions of a beat. That's just one of the limitations of this Serato DJ Lite software. However, having these buttons here is cool because that's something that wasn't on the previous controller. You can actually adjust the loop in and out point manually as well, which is nice. I'll show you how you do that. You hold down the shift button and you hold down either the left or the right one, depending on whether it's the in point or the out point of the loop you want to adjust. And then while you're holding those two, you move the jog wheel. So I'll hold those two now and switch over to the software and you can see watch how the, see the loop point, the in point is getting longer, getting earlier in the track, making the loop longer. So the idea is you can adjust that to exactly where you want the in point of the loop. And by switching over to shift and the other one, these big hands to do this, you can adjust the out point of the loop as well. This is useful when looping material which hasn't had the BPM guessed properly by the software because maybe it's a, an old disco track or an old funk track where these functions uh, don't work so well because the beat grid is wrong. The beat grid is the grid the software lays over the music in order to do all these functions. So manual looping is built into those as well. They're a good addition. I think that's a, a great thing to have added that was missing on the previous one. So let's now move on to the kind of meat and bones of this because there is a really cool new feature in here. Well, I say cool, some people will love this, some people not so much. It's the way they've implemented Serato's software effects. So what's cool about this is that they are now very immediate. They use paddles and paddles are straight from battle mixes such as the Newmark Scratch Mixer and the Pioneer DJ MS9. These are really something preferred by Scratch DJs who just want to really bang an effect in quickly and not worry too much about all the fine tuning of it. In DJ controllers nowadays there is a move away from the old way effects were done which was effects engines, two of them, one above each deck and you could assign them to different decks and channels and they had lots of controls and stuff. They were all very good but no one really used them because they were too complicated. And there's been a trend towards keeping things simple. So the way Pioneer did it on its gear was by copying the way effects are on Pioneer Pro DJ mixes. So that they're just the same on controllers as they are on Pro mixes. It did take away some of the functionality that's in the software, but what you gained was immediacy in something that's familiar. And what Newmark's done is gone through a slightly different take and take this kind of paradigm from the scratch world. So. One of your decisions about this controller is whether you like this, whether you just want the standard effects layout that's always been on software, or whether you like the Pioneer look. And I will look at controllers towards the end that have got those alternatives for you. But for now, let's look at how this works. So these paddles, let's start the track playing again from the beginning. These paddles are three-way switches. In the middle, they're off. But let's put a high-pass filter on. There's six effects here which are controlled inside the software. High-pass filter, low-pass, flanger phaser, reverb and echo. Let's put a high-pass filter on and turn it on. Now, if I release the button, it goes back. So it's kind of a momentary effect. And I can do it with all the other effects as well in the software. If I press it up, I don't need to keep my hand on it because it holds. So that's the way the paddles work. And I think it's really nice. Especially nice actually with the filters because with filters, you've got this filter knob and it's hard to do what I'm doing there. Because you never know quite where to turn it to and you can't get that immediate click that you get with the button. So especially with the filters, I like that. So over on the software, in order to use the effects, you have a little effects panel that tells you what's going on on them. And one of the things it tells you is this beat section, which is how quickly the effect cycles round, how quickly what it does happens again. So with an echo, it could be how quickly the next echo comes in. Uh, with a flanger or a phaser, which we'll listen to in a minute, it's how quickly the sound cycles around. That is controlled by the button here, the beats knob. And the beats knob, when you turn it, will change that beats value on your decks. You can see it's on eight now, four, two, one, uh, and that goes down as well. So this is the, uh, the, the beats cycle knob. There's also a knob here for the dry wet. Uh, and dry wet is how much of the effect you hear. So if I turn that down to dry, nothing's going to happen. If I turn it to wet, nearly kills the sound. In fact, all the way, you know, you can hardly hear that. So somewhere in the middle is where you're probably going to want it, but you're going to want to experiment for the effect and 
the tracks you're using as to where you want that. So they're the extra controls we have. Let's talk through what we've got. So we've already looked at the low pass filter and the high pass filter, which are variations on that. There's an echo and the echo will, let's just turn it on and turn the track off so you can hear it. We'll echo the track out like that. It's post fader, which means that the track will continue to echo out even though we turned it off there. That's a good thing. There is a reverb, the same thing, which will just give you that big reverb effect. Um, for the reverb, uh, I always think it's nice to set the beat value very high. So I'll do that now, beat value all the way up there to eight. Uh, and then to, uh, to reverb your track out, just trigger it on. There you go. Uh, and there's also the flanger. And phaser, which are similar, kind of two variations on that phasing pumping effect, which is beloved of guitar bands from the 70s and also new disco and genres like that. So they're the effects that you've got. Now the downside to this, and there is a downside to this, Serato has got two effects engines. Each, each one of which can control up to three effects. So you can have six things going on, all feeding into each other, all on different decks. It's pretty powerful. This has got one. Not per deck, but for the whole thing. And that's what we were just looking at. When you change the effects here, as we saw in the software, they change on every single deck that you've got. And you're only controlling one of the decks as well. Now that is that will, to some will be a deal breaker. To me, I don't mind it. I think it's great. It's just, it's just there, bang, bang, bang. You don't need many effects. You've got the filters here anyway. I like that, but it certainly is bold to say, look, Serato's got all these effects in it, but we're only gonna let you trigger one for the whole unit. That said, you can still control the other effects by using the mouse on the keyboard. You can still move over to these other effects and turn them on and add them in and stuff. It's just that you don't have the ability to do it from the device itself. So they'll divide people, I like them. I thought these paddle effects were really cool. Let's move on now and look at the pads because the pads are an improvement. Uh, they've moved a bit closer to how they are in a lot of other controllers, but they're still not perfect and I'll explain why when we get there. So the pads have gained these buttons across the top and these assign what function the pads are gonna do. Now they weren't here on the previous uh, incarnation of this controller, which meant that you had some convoluted holding down shift and doing stuff that I never quite got the hang of uh, because this is so normal the way it's laid out here. So it's good to see these here. So the pads have got these selectors at the top. Now, before we look at what these four selectors do and how they affect these pads, I do need to cover something off. In Serato DJ Lite, you only get four pads for the cues, the loops, and the other stuff we're about to look at. And yet there are eight pads here and in most DJ gear, you get eight. So you get eight cues, you get eight auto loop functions and so on. So what they've done here is put different functions on here so that out of the box, when you plug it in with the cut down version of the software, you can use these, all these buttons to do stuff. But in truth, what the bo bottom buttons do isn't that useful. So let's get the track playing. The bottom buttons will go backwards in the track. Like this. And forwards like that. But guess what? You can do that on the jog wheel. It's kind of what the jog wheel is for. So that's kind of useless. This one here will jump back to the beginning of the track. That's now right back at the beginning of the track. You can see on the screen. And actually we'll jump to the next track before that track and before that track. Jumping to the previous track, I don't actually like. I just did it by mistake that you saw there. And also you can just jump back to the beginning of the track by holding shift and pressing Q anyway like that so you know they're they're just shoved there and to be honest with you when you upgrade this controller uh, to serato dj pro they will start working like pads should work so it's just a labeling thing and it's a software thing other controllers that work with serato dj Lite do a similar thing it's a limitation in the software that's provided all right then with that covered off let's look at what the pads actually do so the first function when we press this button here is the hot cues and hot cues are a way of placing on your track a point that you can come back to so on the screen i'm now at the beginning of the track moving using the jog wheel to get there to that first beat and if i press the hot cue button here the light will come on and it's dropped a cue point at that beat in the software. And now that cue point 
will trigger that beat. If the track's playing, it will jump back to it for me and play from there. And the good thing about cue points, let's just add another cue point. So I'm gonna add another cue point using the second button there. So I now have a cue point on the second button, triggering that cue point and the first one, jumping back to that first cue. And I can do the others as well, the other two as well. The good thing about them is they get recorded and remembered. So next time you load up that track, they're all there for you. They're kind of like permanent cues. So that's what cue points do. There's only four of them, like I said, they work completely as cue points work in all DJ software. So you add them like that to get rid of them. You hold down shift and press the cue and the light goes out and they've gone. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Auto loop does exactly what I showed you here, but using these. So you get your one beat loop here on this. So trigger a one beat loop. That's now one beat looping that you can see on the screen. Two, four, and eight. And I did that by pressing these buttons here. Exactly the same as starting a loop on there. And indeed, look, press the loop on there. It comes on on here as well. It's exactly the same function across different buttons. And I can double and half it. You can see as I press these buttons, they go up and down on here as well. This is just a duplication of this. So the next one, uh, I'm not gonna do fader cuts yet. I'm gonna do sampler next because fader cuts is quite interesting. So I'll leave that one a bit of suspense and leave that one to the end. So the sampler controls the sampler inside the software. So looking at the software now, I click at the very top of the screen, the little air horn, and then the sample slots, you can see the words empty streets, spin back siren and gunshot here. These are the samples I've got loaded. To load a sample, you find a sample in your software for instance, a laser. I'll drop the laser over the first slot there of these four. There's another four on this deck as well. I've now got a laser, a spin back, a siren, and a gunshot set. So that means that here, once I press sampler, pressing these will give me those four effects. Here's the laser, the spin back, the siren, and the gunshot. It's already sounding like a, a cliche DJ set, isn't it? So on the screen, you can see that when you trigger those, you can see the bar moving, showing you how far through the sample you've played. There are another couple of, couple of controls on the very far right-hand side of the screen. You get a volume control for the sample and you can mute them all. Uh, those are not on the controller itself. So you've got to use those by dragging them on with the mouse. So the sample is there, very, very simple sampler, but it does the job. It's good for dropping in eye dents and DJ drops and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, there's not much more to show you. I've literally shown you everything that sampler does there. But just, just to bear in mind what I just said, everything I'm showing you now is also on the other deck as well. That's the way pads work. You get one set for each deck. All right then, let's talk about fader cuts. Because fader cuts are quite interesting. If you've ever seen or heard a gate or gator effect, or a transform effect, you'll know that it's something that cuts the track in and out rhythmically. So it might cut it in and out four times for every beat or on every beat or whatever. And that's what fader cuts do. It's just basically the transform or gate effect. The reason they've called it fader cuts is that it comes from scratch DJs cutting the fader in and out like this rhythmically with the music in order to achieve the same effect. So it's best with vocals and acapellas I find that you can chop up the acapella and make them sound quite nice like that. But nonetheless, I can show you quickly on this track. So fader cuts is set. It only works when you're holding it. So you can hear that cutting in and out. And it does it with different rhythms depending on which one you press. Combining that with filters and maybe an effect, you might be able to come up with some nice sounds using that. It's, it's good, it's cool to have it there. And it's nice actually that it isn't on the effects because it means you can use it, as I just said, with the effects. So that's the fader cuts. Overall, the pad's a bit limited due to the software, better than on the previous Mix Track Platinum. So definitely a step in the right direction there. All right then, I just wanna quickly talk you through some of the other functions on here before giving you my thoughts on it and other controllers you might want to consider alongside this before making your decision. So a few other functions to cover off. So the way you switch decks is by pressing the deck select button. Now I was showing you that holding down shift lets you do other things on these buttons. These are the loop buttons and they're written underneath, reloop in and out. This is labeled incorrectly as far as I can tell because it's implying that holding down shift and pressing this button will switch decks, we actually don't need to, you just press that to switch decks, it now says deck three up here and deck one. Uh, holding down shift and pressing that uh, turns on and off the scratch function, which is 
whether the deck, let's just switch the deck back again, which is whether the deck does this when you're playing it, which it's not doing now, but if I turn that on, it will do that. I think there's a little glitch there that they're probably gonna to wanna to fix up. Uh, but nonetheless, there's that extra function there using shift. And there's other buttons that use shift as well. So for instance, holding down shift and pressing this pitch bend minus button, pitch bend just slows down and speeds up the deck momentarily. A bit like nudging it. But holding down shift and pressing this will alter the amount that this slows down or speeds up the track. And holding down shift and pressing this one, key lock, decides whether the key or pitch stays the same or not. See it's getting higher and lower. Holding down this and pressing that will lock that. So that doesn't happen. And that's the pitch range getting more extreme as I do the other one. So that's what these are for. There's generally functions like this on controllers that let you control extra things because there aren't enough buttons otherwise. Uh, and that's no different on this particular one. Uh, let's have a quick talk through the headphones controls. So this is a headphone control area. So for instance, when that deck's playing, and the crossfader is over there, the audience is hearing that deck. If I want to hear the other deck, I press the Q button there, and then that will come out of my headphones only for me. Until I mix it in using this, only I will hear that. You have a volume control for your headphones, and you also have a control that decides how much of what you hear is what the audience is hearing, and how much is what the Q buttons are saying. So that's here, again, very, very standard stuff. The browsing functions at the top let you load your music. So we have this big browse knob here, which is moving through my music on the screen. If I press it, it then switches to the file tree on the screen. You can see I'm now moving through my playlists and so on there. Pressing it again, will go to whatever playlist I've selected and then I can move through that in order to load. And to load a track, you just go to the track that you want and hit the load button left or right to get it onto the deck. So it's now loaded onto the left hand deck by pressing that one there. I press the right button, it will load it onto the right hand deck, which you can see on the screen now. Couple of other controls, here's your mic volume, here's your master volume. This lacks a sensor or a bleep, if you like, button, which is actually on the smaller mix track Pro. It's the only thing I could see that was missing from the Mixtrack Pro, but from this compared to the Mixtrack Pro FX, the, the, the smaller controller in the range that's released at the same time, uh, which allows you to kind of like bleep out swear words. And I think it's missing because they just couldn't find uh, a button to put it on. Uh, all right. That is your tour of the controller. That is your look at the new effects, the new displays and the new pads. Let's talk about whether this is for you. So the plus points. Uh, the plus points are this. Uh, four channels is great. You know, no other controller at this entry level range gives you control of four channels of software. It's even better that you can do it inside Serato DJ Lite. Uh, and I like that. I think that's a good, uh, a good thing. So if four channels is important to you. You got it. The jog wheels are absolutely marvelous. I mean, these, as I said, I just, they feel, look at that. They're just right. They just feel really nice. They're weighted. They're, they're, they don't deserve to be on a controller like this, honestly. Uh, that's a big, big change from the original mix track and uh, I love them, I think they're brilliant. So great jogs. The faders, again, uh, the pitch faders are very nice, long throw pitch faders, which I liked. These, these are all right, they do the job. The, uh, the effects, you're gonna love it or hate it, I loved it. I think this is bold and I think it works. So well done on that. And the displays, again, for the price, pretty unheard of, so great to see that. So the downsides, well, the software limits the use of the pads and the software is limited anyway, which is a downside of any Serato DJ Lite controller. It's $99 to upgrade it. They've always got offers on inside the software at the moment. At the top left, they've got Serato DJ Pro for a, uh, a dollar. You can guarantee that that won't be a dollar for life. There will be a fee down the line for that, but they're always running offers. So if you do buy this, just keep an eye on Serato's website or emails for offers to get it a bit cheaper, but you do need to function in, to, to factor in the fact that you're probably gonna to wanna to upgrade the software to get lots of things. There's this all over the software, there's little bits that you, you click on something and it says you need to upgrade to, to have this function. In the end, it's gonna annoy you so much you'll buy it, which is of course what they want. So yeah, that is a downside. Uh, the reason it's a downside is that, well, let's talk about some competitors. The Pioneer DDJ400 comes in at a similar price and it's got two deck control, not four, and it hasn't got those nice internal displays, but it comes with the full version of Rekordbox, which is the software for Pioneer's controllers, which has it's got 
so much more than Serato DJ Lite. It really has. So if that's your budget and you don't want to buy more software, you might want to look at the Pioneer controller. It's also laid out more like a club controller, which is another differentiator between the two. Or you might want to look at the Pioneer DDJ SB3, which has got a more conventional effects layout above each jog wheel. So if you want more control over the effects and you don't want these paddles and stuff, that might be the better controller for you. Or indeed, you might just want to look at the mix track Pro FX, which we have a review of as well. You can go and look, it's linked underneath this, because this has only got two channels. This doesn't have the internal displays, but apart from that, it's got absolutely everything that this has got. So it might just be that you wanna save the $50 there and wait for a, an offer on Serato at half price or something and get the full software and you'll be absolutely fine with that. Uh, and your differentiator really will be whether you want four channel control or not because the displays internally are nice to have, but they're not essential. All right then, that's the Newmark Mixtrack Platinum FX. It's new and I wanna know what you think about it. Let us know in the comments underneath. I think it's a great controller for the money and I think they're gonna sell loads and loads of these. The big question is gonna be whether they sell more of that one or this one uh, and we'll have to wait and see, but we liked it. So get good, get out there, make the moments. Do remember to subscribe and follow if you've enjoyed this and I'll see you again in another review very soon.